All right, guys, so moving on in our conversation in football, uh, we're going to get a little deeper into some of the X's and O's. Um, we're going to call this course Football 201. Uh, this is definitely not introductory. Um, this is probably more fitting for guys that, that play the game or girls that play the game. Um, so what we're going to go over is today defense um, and, and specifically alignments and assignments for the front seven. Um, I think I, I'm a defensive guy. I'm a believer that if you understand defense, you understand offense and how to attack a defense. I think that defense dictates the game because a defense tells the offense what it is and is not going to allow it to do uh, by how they line up. So without any further ado, I'm going to erase this here and we'll get started. So I think it's important to understand from a defensive perspective, the original formations in football, probably the first formation in football, or what's often considered to be the first, was a straight T formation. And, and you have to imagine, this is before the forward pass was allowed. So there used to be no throwing of the ball down the field. Um, there were no eligible receivers. It was all running. Um, so you had something like this, right? The T formation. Well, you line up in a T formation with no forward pass, and you're obviously going to see a lot of guys on the line of scrimmage. So you would see a lot of seven-man fronts, okay, where they would line up, say, like this, maybe shaded here. And we'll go over what shaded means. Um, here, here. So you would see formations like this, right? And then you might have a guy out here, two guys in here, and a guy out here, okay? So you're going to see all the guys down the line of scrimmage. There's no forward pass. That's originally how defenses started. Transition to now, and what you see are a lot of spread formations for the most part. Um, 12P, um, 11P, so one back sets um, with an H back or a tight end. If you remember, we talked about that 11 and 12P being the first number the number of backs and the second number the number of tight ends slash H-back type guys. Um, or you'll see just five wide formations, right? So we'll see stuff like this. We got a quarterback in the shotgun and we got trips receiver over here and, you know, stacked receiver. I mean, they come up with all sorts of stuff now. So this, obviously, you're not going to line up with a seven-man front of the box because they're going to get you with numbers out here. So defenses have had to adjust over time to what offenses do. And that's usually what happens. And you'll see runs in over years where offenses will kind of be ahead for a while, and then defenses catch up. And then offenses adjust to what's in vogue, and defenses adjust again. Uh, so it's kind of a chess match. So what we're, what we're seeing now with the spread formations, um, we're seeing a lot of both 30 and 40 fronts. And I'm going to go over just some basic terms. Um, And let's do it with just a single tight end. So we'll do something like an 11 P set here, okay? And we'll be the defense. We're going to go this way. Uh, offense is going this way. So here's the quarterback. Um, so just some basic terms. Let's start with just what we call an Oki front, okay? An Oki front is a term we use for odd defenses. Oki's straight four techniques, right? Their heads up here on the tackles, and you got a zero. That's an Oki front. Okay, Oki front, or some people call it a straight, uh, straight 50 front. We're not talking about linebackers, we're just talking about the defensive line right now. We would consider this to be what's called an Oki front. Okay, so from an Oki front, there's a couple things we can do. We can move to what's called an, an under front. Uh, actually, I take that back. Let's go from Oki to Eagle. So, in Oki, where we traditionally had a, a four technique, if we wanted to eagle down, we could shade this guy here. This would be called an eagle, single eagle front, okay? So we shade him, and let's say we bring down a backer here. And we'd stay here, and we'd stay, you know, with our regular four technique. That would be a single eagle or an eagle down front. So this is called eagling down. Now, some people will call it an eagle, eagle into a shade here. Sometimes they'll eagle this all the way down into a two technique eagle. Play something more like an eight technique here. Okay? If you haven't watched the video on techniques first, you're gonna to wanna to watch the video on techniques first because I'm gonna talk in defensive linemen technique alignments and you're gonna be lost if you haven't watched that. So if you haven't, please go back and watch that video before you watch this one. Um, 
So, so either one of those would be considered an eagle front, where we're taking that four technique and, and reducing him down into the box here um, to either a shaded three or a straight two technique here. So a double eagle front kind of has its own name. They call that a bear front, okay? So a bear front, again, another odd front. Let's say, let's just put them both in, in threes or, you know, inside shades here, okay? So they're, they're primarily B-gap defenders, but they could, you know, cross face and go outside if they have to. Um, now you can double eagle and go all the way down to double two techniques um, and walk backers down on both sides if you want to. Obviously your 30 front now just became basically a 50 front, okay? Um, so I think Oki and Bear are important terms in and eagling that you need to understand when you're talking defensive football and talking about an odd front. Um, that's odd front defense right there. Even fronts. So an even front, and let's just go with a straight even front here, or what some guys will call an Indian front. Two techniques, okay? Now this guy here is probably going to have to play in, in an eight here if we're going to play like this. We'll play a five here, okay? Even front defense, okay? This would be an Indian or a straight even front, okay? There's a couple things we can do here to the strong side. And when I designate the strong side, it's going to be to the tight end if there is a tight end. If there's not a tight end, most teams will consider the wide side of the field to be the strong side, or you know, if they're playing numbers, the most receiver side of the field, the strong side. Right now, we're going to say it's a tight end, just for simplicity. An overfront, which is a term now that we use for four-man fronts, okay? So real quick, let me just show you this. You talk about odd fronts, you talk about the T and T, tackle, nose, tackle. Okay, that's what we were doing when we were doing Oki and bear fronts, eagling, all that fun stuff. Um, now we're going to be talking about end, tackle, tackle, end. Four defensive linemen, okay, instead of three. So the terms of the defensive linemen change. You notice there's no end there. There's no nose tackle. Um, Indian front, straight even. If we want to move that to an over front, what we're going to do is, I always think of it as kicking it over to the strength. Okay, so if we kick the front over to the strength, we're going to get a shade here, okay, and we're going to get a shade here. So we kind of kick those twos to a one and a three technique, okay. Now I'm not talking anything about the back end here. You don't know if this is a four three with a Mike linebacker, or you don't know if this is a four four with a pair of inside split backers, okay. It doesn't really matter. We're just talking about the front four right now. That's an over front. If we want to go to an under front, okay, an under front will take us here, we'll shade from this side, and goes to a five technique primarily, okay, so we're going to get this, we're going to get this, we're going to kick over here, this. That's an underfront, and obviously we walk down the backer now. Okay, that's an underfront. Now with an underfront, well, we're a lot stronger C gap here, which is an area where a lot, of, you know, A, B, C. We're a lot stronger than the C gap. We've got a guy sitting in C gap and a guy outside there. We're really squeezing the C gap, and, and this is a popular front a lot of guys run um, if they want to stop these teams from running power, which is a big play that a lot of teams run, and we'll get to that when we when we do the offensive talk. Um, obviously, if we were a 4 3 defense, we walk this guy down, okay? The backers would kick over here a little bit, and we wind up, you know, with backers something like this. So it looks like a 5 2, but that's still an even front, guys. That's end, tackle, tackle, end. We just walk a backer down. So people would look at that and say, oh, they're an odd front defense. Saying, no, they're in an under front. They're a 40, they're a 40 defense, they're just in an under 40. Um, so hopefully that makes a little more sense with. with over and under. Um, I'll just draw it one more time. Over, so you understand. Overs tend to reduce the guys in the box. Unders tend to turn into 50s. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the over one more time. And then here's our end. So because we allow our end to stay outside, or he could play an eight. Depends on what you want to do here. Okay, let's, I like this better, but. Um, 
Now we can still maintain our back or walk off over here. So if we were in, say, a 4-3, we'd be sitting more like this. Okay, we have Sam here. Mike and Will. Okay. Sam, strong side. Mike, middle. Will, weak side. And that's where we're going to go next. Linebacker level. So at the linebacker level, we either have Sam, Mike, and Will. Okay, we're, we're, I call it a Mike set, okay, um, where we have an odd number of linebackers similar to when we had an odd number of defensive linemen and we called one a nose tackle. Now we have an odd number of linebackers, we call the middle one Mike, the weak side one Will, and the strong side one Sam, okay? If we want to contrast that with uh, split backers, a lot of times, you know, you can just, we just call them backers, we draw them split, okay? Now they may have a strong inside split backer that goes to the tight end and a weak side inside backer. And, and people name these things all sorts of things. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, and you could still say you wanted to call this guy Sam and, and the outside backer and inside Will. Okay, let's just call them inside backers and outside backers for right now. Okay. Um, this would be more of a 4-4 defense. Okay, where we have split backers. Now you could still play an under or an over front out of either one of these, and the backers would shift depending on if you went under, you know, you'd bring one of the outside backers down. Um, but they're interchangeable. The, what you do up here, under, over, you know, oaky, <laughs> bear, it's going to affect these guys on when they have to roll down. And it also depends, do you want to have a hard cap on this edge? Because if you want to have a hard cap here on this edge, and play a hard force guy here on the edge, or, or what some guys will call a contain guy, um, that, that you're going to need to walk backers down. Some guys are okay, you know, putting guys in here and letting this guy read through him. If he locks in, he's coming. Okay? And they, they're, they're comfortable with their guy doing that. Uh, although I would say with where we are now with, with all the uh, run pass options and that, that that's, you're going to see that go by the wayside. Okay. So... Defensive alignments, we kind of understand that. Next, we're going to talk about uh, defensive assignments for the front seven, okay?